Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fintech ki baat dil se. Today we have with us Mr. Mayur Modi, the founder of Moneybox. Moneybox is an NBFC that is essentially aimed at empowering the SMEs in tier 3, tier 4 and those kind of areas, right? And uh, this specific uh, according to my knowledge, this specific uh, business or this specific uh, business model is really important for India's growth right now because uh, when you go down to tier 3, tier 4 areas, these are the industries and these are the companies that are actually creating employment uh, generating income and contributing a lot to the gdp majority of the industries in india are smes so uh, let's talk to mr mayur and understand what he's doing and how he's empowering you know these entrepreneurs to you know grow thank you mr mayur it's a pleasure having you here thank you so much for joining us thank you shreyas and uh, it's a pleasure talking to you look forward to the conversation great great uh mr mayur before we you know deep dive into the uh, sme lending space and start talking about it i quickly want to you know uh, understand a bit of your background uh, what were you doing before this what inspired you to start moneybox and so on so over to you uh so shares you know uh, like any typical middle class family you know uh, um, you know i also started roughly around 20 years back uh, the journey um, mm-hmm. uh, in terms of my professional journey Uh, right. so my parents you know they come from a background where they used to work uh, uh, as an employment they used to be employed uh, mm-hmm. but you know all of my cousins you know if you look at my uh, background and my history family history all of my cousins they were always into some kind of a business uh, but uh, typically our family was always kind of an employed and you know then you kind of you know tend to follow your fathers and mothers footsteps uh, mm-hmm. so after education uh i did my chartered accountant uh cleared that in 2002 and started looking for a job i think that's the natural progression that you see uh yes. whilst there was always a desire to do something of our own uh but uh, uh typically you know the availability of capital the opportunity that that point in time 20 years back was far mm-hmm. less than what it is today uh you know so the natural thing to for you to do is find a job settle down and then probably you know generate some capital and then you no know, look to do something and that's what uh, that's how i started my journey in 2002 completed mm-hmm. my ca uh, worked in a large mnc organization and then one thing led to other you know uh, uh, then slowly slowly i started getting into banking uh, in 2006 7 uh, worked there enjoyed a lot and you know, uh, got to travel the world uh, uh, some of the very exciting uh, places uh, mm-hmm. also saw the financial crisis of 2008 2009 very closely i was in us at that point in time and oh. you know <clears throat> worked on some of the key transactions lehman brothers at that point in time when i was oh. uh, i was there uh, so that really opened up in terms of some of the excesses that some of these large institutions indulge in and uh, you know the result is the brunt of those results have to be borne by everybody you know the financial crisis mm-hmm. unfolded and there was a lot of mayhem in terms of people getting laid off and so on and so forth came mm. back uh, uh, again you know worked uh, uh, in in a bank uh, for 10 years uh, but you know the desire of doing something of my own was always there uh, you know so sometime in 2018 you know 17 18 uh, myself and my other co-founder deepak you know we started you know talking about what should we do with our lives is this the thing that we want to do for the rest of our lives and that's when we decided that this is the right time to do because you know the world was changing india was changing a lot of startups were getting uh, uh, you know were coming out uh, very innovative products on the fintech side were coming mm-hmm. out uh, and in 2017 18 you know we finally decided that you know enough is enough we've done 15 years of our corporate life we'll do something of our own and uh, 2018 is when the idea finally uh, took shape in the form of money box uh, Uh, so the idea, uh, so so you know, a couple of things, uh, you know, before we get into what we do, how we do, uh, you know, one thing was very clear from uh, from the start in our minds that whatever we do has to make a real impact on the ground because you know we don't right. want to be again being seen as the as the big boys, uh, uh, you know, uh, funding again the same institutions, same uh, businesses, uh, whom everybody is ready to fund today. Uh, right mm-hmm. we wanted to go into the interiors tier 3 tier 4 uh, and actually make the real impact in terms of where exactly the financing is needed uh, so mm-hmm. if you look at the indian landscape today you know roughly if you look at the indian landscape 
uh, almost 50% of the gdp is contributed by the rural india uh, they right. are roughly 900 million people living in rural india uh, but the share of their credit in the indian gdp is only 9% which is mm-hmm. very low you know because bulk of the credit and the financing actually goes to tier 1 and tier 2 which is roughly around 91% which is a huge divergence in terms of what the rural india contributes to the india gdp and what they can get back in terms of financing uh, uh, from from the banks and financial institutions i think that was a striking number that uh, that we saw that this is something wrong uh, in terms of how the financing and the credit distribution is happening across india mm-hmm. and then we started getting into why why is this problem how is this problem and what can we do to solve this problem right uh when we did our research started in our research in 2017 18 we found out that you know uh you know there was a lot of effort in terms of making sure that financial inclusion at the bottom of the pyramid which is the what we call as the microfinance institutions uh in the last 10 years you know uh, the government of the days uh, and the regulator rbis had done a good job in terms of uh, uh you know opening up a lot of opportunities to kind of you know bring the bottom of the pyramid up in terms of economic growth you know the mm-hmm. mfi industry was well matured at that point in time uh, right. uh, but the thing that we found out that you know what happens after a person has really borrowed from the mfi uh, microfinance because as you know just for everybody's advantage microfinance institutions kind of you know typically uh, follow a joint liability group or, or a group lending kind of in you know, a model where eight ten people come together and then you know they fund uh, 10000 20000 30000 rupees uh, for small businesses uh, 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 that you can do uh, right. and typically women borrowers uh, are, are part of this system uh, but is what this happens, a self help group model or absolutely absolutely right. joint liability group self help group model mm-hmm. uh, now that was kind of developed uh, quite uh, beautifully in the last 10 years uh, you know uh, typically the rural india the interior for the rural india where this was getting developed uh, mm-hmm. but what we what we found out that what next for these borrowers you know once they have funded or got funding from the microfinance institutions uh, mm-hmm. now what happens to them if they aspirations have grown if their income levels have grown and they need more funding which is in the range of 1 to 5 lakh rupees or 7 lakh rupees typically right right uh, and to our surprise uh, uh, you know there was nobody to fund them you know which was very very surprising and uh, and we found out that you know once they come out of the mfi loan there is mm-hmm. actually a huge gap a credit gap uh, which uh, these borrowers face uh, and there are a couple of reasons for that right because uh, in what happens in a joint liability group that each person is kind of insuring the other person's liability right there is so there is a gap in the ticket size right is what you're saying Ki, yes. if there is a there is a credit available for let's 30 50000 and the next right. slab of credit is 5 lakh 10 lakh kind of a thing but there is a gap in between that is not covered by any institution Ab- absolutely absolutely and the reasons for for not covering this is many fold i think you know one is the cost of acquisition is is very high because you know then True. you need to individually assess this customers understand what are their cash flows incomes expenses and mm. even in the mfi uh, you know loans you know they have not really created a credit history you know they have not created a digital footprint or the financial footprint which would be required for any other lender to come in and assess the income levels of these borrowers uh, you know that was one thing which we found out that you know uh, whilst you know he might be a good uh, you know borrower uh, hmm. uh, uh, to lend but how do i assess his income and how do i know that how much is he earning in a month whether he is earning 25000 50000 1 lakh rupees uh, because hmm. when i look at his banking statement there is no records I, there are no gst records there are no income tax filings done by this customer there are mm. no business registrations you know done by this customer these are all uh, cash economy that we call you know uh, uh, that we know of that you know everything is dealt in cash the purchases and sales uh, true and then that is where we found that this is very exciting uh, because this is challenging first for sure because uh, it's not easy to underwrite these customers but mm-hmm. if we can build somehow a credit underwriting model around these customers there is mm-hmm. a huge opportunity in terms of a business model to be built plus uh, the impact that will will have the cascading impact that it will have on the borrowers and the and the ecosystem will be huge it will be huge, uh, will be huge. so that's how yeah. we started this journey 
and we said that we'll form this NBFC, uh, uh, you know, Money Box Finance in 2018. We went through all the process of regulation regulator in terms of acquiring the entity, uh, you know, uh, you know, licenses, and then you know, setting up the teams, logistics, uh, technology uh, was going mm-hmm. to play a very important part in in the whole scheme of things that we wanted to do because. Uh, you know, if you have to do this at a scale, we cannot do this uh, without the help of technology, right? Uh, so, the, so the challenges were twofold. One, how do we use technology to kind of you know make sure that you know we reach the maximum number of uh, uh, the borrowers? Uh, two, how do we underwrite? Uh, you know, so we said that the pure play fintech model is probably not going to work because these yeah. are customers who cannot. Come on a on a Play Store or uh, or an Apple Store to kind of you know download an application, fill up the details, upload some mm-hmm. of the information, documents, and 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 so forth, so on and so right. forth. Uh, so you need to have an assisted journey. You need to be with the customer. You need to be closer to the customer to understand uh, these customers, understand their cash flows. So we went for a digital model, as we say. So we mm. said that you know we'll be closer to the customers, but we will use. the best possible technology available and solutions to kind of you know onboard these underwrite this and then disburse or distribute the loans that we wanted to do Good. so that is how we got to uh you know develop this model uh, and you know i'm very happy to share that yesterday we crossed 200 crores of aum wow uh, that's uh, that's great in roughly around under 4 years we today have 50 uh, you know locations 50 branches in six states uh we mm-hmm. cover a lot of uh, north and central india we started with rajasthan moved to punjab haryana mp uh, and now we have operations in up and chatisgarh as well uh, and let's uh, let's uh, let's take a pause here uh, i want to uh, i want to go back to a few points that you mentioned earlier right you know from your journey to you know how you actually built so i had a couple of questions there Sure. So, so when you when we look at uh, let's say you said that you were in US for some time you came back to India you were working in a bank over here for almost 9 and a half 10 years before you actually got into entrepreneurship so at what point uh, did you realize ki a 9 to 5 job is not something because uh, if i'm sure if you have been in the industry if you have been in US and if you have been in India almost 9 and a half years you would have a like a very great like a very senior level good job you would be like perfectly settled so what was it inside you that drove you ki nahi and this is not something that i want to do be doing for the rest of my life ye nahi karna hai kuch impact karna hai ya kuch khud se karna hai ye kya what was it that drove you to entrepreneurship so shares kya hota hai to this desire was always there it's just that mm-hmm. the opportunity started opening up after 2015 so as to say and you know that kida that you say you know because coming from a marwadi background uh family uh this thing mm-hmm. is always there that you know uh, uh uh you know why are you doing a job you know whenever we used to have this family meetings and 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 gatherings you know everybody around us uh was kind of you know doing something of their own and probably i was the only one uh who was very very doing good very good uh, obviously right. in the job very comfortable probably got too comfortable uh, uh in the job and 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 then you know at some point in time in your life you know you it starts stacking you back as to what is the real purpose uh, of what you are doing uh whether you are actually doing what you like uh, and what you want to do uh what you always wanted to do and those questions started you know uh, as you as you mature in your life those questions start kind of you know, haunting you more uh, and more uh, and and then you know opportunity started opening up you know we saw this opportunity we had built a small nest safety net of our own you know small uh, you know capital which we said that you know we'll try and use this because we didn't want to borrow and then invest you know that was not something mm-hmm. uh you would want to do because you don't know how this is going to shape up right so Absolutely. so the first thing that you want to do is you know invest your own capital so that at least if this doesn't work out you know you can always go back uh to a job you know this is an experience that you take back mm-hmm. with you and hope and hopefully people will value that experience you know that is that is how you look at uh, exactly think, and and that was the trigger i would say and then you know then you then i had deepak as a co-founder who also wanted to do and so if if there are two people who want to do the same thing and share the same you know same passion i think it becomes easier the journey becomes a lot easier uh, uh, you know you you are in a position to take more risk there is there are people to support you because they have seen you over the years your conduct mm-hmm. your you know uh, character 
and and then they believe in you uh, right uh, exactly uh, 20 years back probably nobody would have believed in me in terms of you know saying that i want to do this you know then and and today probably that track record has got established in terms of you know working in an industry for 15 years and people know you and people kind of you know value that experience of yours uh so True. that was one thing and then you take that leap of faith right so 2017 you know was that day uh, one day uh, Uh, actually we were traveling i was traveling to uh, to gangotri and jamnotri and then you know those thoughts starts coming to your mind and this is what uh, i just called up deepak from the center you know this is see i am i am doing this uh, 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 you know uh, visit and you know after that i want to come and discuss something with you uh, i know we have been discussing off on and on off and but this is something we we can actually take this to the next level and you know maybe you can say divine intervention or something but थिंग and uh, i'm very very thankful pehle kadam ki zarurat hoti hai uske liye pehle kadam ki zarurat hai yeah yes. so that in initial, initial hitch and you know it, it and to my surprise you know i didn't have to do a lot of convincing back home you know because mm-hmm. i thought that it will be a lot of resistance uh, from the family and uh, especially you know parents because you know bilkul uh, uh, so they have a certain mindset that you know why do you want to rock the boat you know you have a good job family everything exactly. is going fine you know what is the real need to do this uh, at this point in time uh, mm-hmm. but they were very very understanding in what i wanted to do they said we'll support you in whatever way we can uh, uh, but if you really feel uh, good about it if you really feel confident about it go and do uh, that you want to do and uh, and that really motivates you to do uh, uh, something in your life bilkul yahan pe maine ek cheez bahut observe kari hai when i have like uh, in my previous experiences as well and while doing the podcast i've spoken to almost uh, kuch 1000 1500 founders se baat kari hogi i've seen two distinct type of people one who comes from a background ki family business tha unhone le liya and now they're running it as a startup building it as a startup aur dusre jo hote hain jinko kisi ki kuch parwah hi nahi hoti hai sab kuch chhod chhod ke yaar this is the calling andar se bula hua aa raha hai wo ek aag hai andar bas sab right. chhod chhod ke ab karna i don't really give a shit about anything that's going to happen this is what i want to do मेरा बेसिक्स कवर है रोटी कपड़ा मकान है बाकी आई फिगर आउट एवरीथिंग एंड कहीं बार आई हैव मेट पीपल जैसा आपको वो गंगोत्री के टाइम पे जो आपको हुआ कि यार अभी कर लेते हैं या सालों से नहीं हो रहा है brain can then come back you know this is like you yeah. know that you, that that line that lakshman rekha if you can say that you know you, you you have to cross that you know to be adventurous uh, in that sense uh, mm-hmm. so so that was the tipping point i think you know uh, i think it builds up so you know once you have that desire uh, right. you know it starts building up building up and then it, it comes there comes a point ki ab yahi karna hai there is nothing else uh, you know that you want to do and this is only one life right at the end of the day mm-hmm. shares sabko ek life milti hai and you know you have exactly. to do what you have to do in this life you know you cannot wait for some other life to do what exactly. you have to do uh if it did, doesn't work out doesn't work out it's okay and a failure is more acceptable today today at least i see that you know failure is more acceptable uh, uh there are people who don't see don't look down upon you if you have if you have failed you know if you have if the intentions are right if if you've done what you've done in honesty I think people understand that you know you've tried, you've done your best. Nahi work out hua, nahi work out hua. It's okay. Uh, exactly, you know, that acceptance has come now. Yeah, it's there. Bilkul. Yahan pe ek aur cheez hai jahan pe a lot of people get stuck is ki jaise ki mere jaise log jinko kuch karne ki aag hai abhi tak identify nahi kar paaye ki karna kya hai. Like I know that at some point of time I want to become an entrepreneur. Job opt karni nahi hai. Theek hai. Right. So the podcast is obviously something that i do as a passion but i still don't know what is it something that i want to do that i can make it a full time thing or usi mein puri jaan laga do right karna hai pata hai but wo nahi pata what would you what would be your advice for these kind of people 
see so what i can think of is uh, you know that is if you want to test your uh, so sometimes what happens is you know there is i want to do something you know but you're not sure whether this is a workable idea not a workable right. idea you know you want to test your hypothesis your idea you know you start small and that's what mm-hmm. i did in terms of you know uh, uh, maybe not exactly this but in terms of my entrepreneurial journey because you know uh, so my wife was a teacher always uh, mm-hmm. and and she said that you know i love teaching kids and i know i want to do something for them and i want to open a play school you know because that's that's something that she would like to do i said please go ahead so we tried that you know we tried we opened a play school we opened a couple of play schools you know we we really love what we doing where whereas we are actually losing money on a month on month basis because that's yeah. not uh, something that you can really make uh, money on but you know we still said okay fine uh, we can afford to do that but if it really uh you know engages you you feel uh, you love what you doing you do that but what that taught us is that you know, how to manage money what are the things that you can think of you know what is it that you should be looking for we went to banks for funding we said funding is not available uh, we went to different people so i think those small small things uh though it was a small capital invested uh, you know at least it taught you in terms of you know what are the steps to take whether this is a workable idea not a workable idea so you can always start, start small a uh, start as a side gig uh, you know do it as a passion for for a year or whatever time that you can spend on do it on weekends and then build on that idea and then once you are convinced because see one thing is that you are convinced about your idea the other thing is that people the world has to be convinced about that idea it has to be a profitable idea as well right uh, uh, exactly right so you need to test you can test small and if you start seeing successes in that then you can start uh, full time you know but start small you know that's the idea uh, and then and then the success rate starts going up you know because then you know exactly what you can do and what you cannot do bilkul bilkul i think that makes a lot of sense uh last question on this specific piece the entrepreneurship piece is you spoke about uh, you know a co-founder mr deepak that you uh, that right. you met and you clicked and you both wanted to do the same thing but i have seen a lot of founders actually struggle to find a co-founder jo unki passion ya jo unka vision share karta hai so any any like uh, idea on how did you essentially you know meet uh, mr deepak and how other people can actually you know go about looking for co-founders so so this is something you know this it has to be chemistry you know that's the only thing i can talk about it's like it's more even more important than a husband wife relationship i would say uh, mm-hmm. because you know this is something that you have to do uh, day in and day out for the rest of whatever you're doing and you know fortunately when i met deepak i met deepak in 2002 when i started my first job and he also was okay. part of the same uh, so we continued uh uh then my second job and he also kind of you know followed so we kind of you know were there for the next four years so we we kind of clicked you know we understood each other psyche we understand uh, you know what works we complement each other very well and after that we moved uh, uh, you know into our different zones into different he 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 kind of stayed back in delhi and i kind of you know moved to bombay uh, but we were always in touch in spite of the fact that we were not working together we were always in touch discussing ideas so for the last 15 20 years uh we worked only for four years but you know but that uh compatibility you know what you say between founders the meeting of the minds was always there you know we used to discuss we, and we always had the same ideas uh, same things that we wanted to do and then mm-hmm. when the opportunity came i think he was the first person that i could think of uh, and uh, in his mind you and i was the first person that he could think of that you know we want to do this together and then when the when the relationship is tested for 15 years i think then you can be Very rest good. assured that you know uh, you will do the right thing yeah exactly and this is probably one of the most crucial relationship a founder can have because i have seen a lot of very successful startups falling apart just because the founders are not agreeing on a few crucial ideologies on how to run the company ya fir koi crucial decision pe disagreement ho jati hai and the company yeah. entirely falls apart see i think skill sets come second in terms of you know when that relationship between founders obviously you need to have skill sets if they complement each other very good because then it adds as a compounding factor in terms of you know what two people can do with complementing skill sets but i think more than that i think the meeting of the minds in terms of the uh, understanding levels you know even though he sits out of gurgaon i sit out of bombay uh, you know but you know what i think and what he thinks more or less you know when we discuss on certain issues ideas or the ways that we want to take this to the next level i think we completely kind of you know match in our ideas and that is what is needed 
execution can be different uh, you know it's not that we don't have debates we have a lot of debates but those are healthy debates uh, you know those are healthy discussions exactly. and i think every time that we have debated something positive has come out out of out of it and i think mm-hmm. that's the way to take it bilkul definitely i think that makes a lot of more lot more sense and i think it should probably help a lot of our viewers to understand ki what kind of a chemistry and what kind of a co-founder they should actually you know start looking for yeah. uh moving to uh, moving to you know uh, the sme lending market and you know what moneybox is doing there so first of all uh, help me understand like what what made you so passionate about this specific segment i've heard you talk about this segment and i've like it is very clear that you are really passionate about this segment and you want to make an impact but what drives that passion is there any specific uh, any any specific underlying cause to it see one thing you know because you know uh, so so what i think is you know the entrepreneurship you know because you know what we fund is businesses and not consumption laws i think mm. you know the only way uh, to build a country or an economy or 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 a healthy you know environment is that you know if we produce start producing more and more entrepreneurs uh, self employment is the way to go forward uh, and True. you know the only thing which kind of you know keeps everybody uh, from kind of you know Uh, achieving their desires or aspirations is is the lack of capital you know because they will have ideas they will have some of the resources mm-hmm. but what kind of you know uh, uh, stops them from achieving these are the, is the, is the access to capital i think you know because you know what when you look at our segment you know these are wonderful people you know residing in tier 3 tier 4 villages uh, running small small shops like the kirana shop that you can think of the hardware and all those shops uh, and what happens is that you know once they want to kind of you know build on that uh, or kind of you know grow their businesses where do they get access to the capital banks don't want to fund them because it's not easy to kind of you know underwrite them uh, and there's nobody else to kind of you know uh, trust them in in a sense with the capital uh, what ends up happening is they kind of you know end up in the uh, in, in in more like a debt trap uh, with the loan sharks you know or that you say mm-hmm. the money lenders the sahukars of the of the world right. where they exploit these people because they know that they have some land which is a uh, small land one or two acre land or maybe they have some gold uh, that they would have saved so they take that as a security and then the rate of interest that they charge is is more like a debt trap they never come out of that uh, debt and that mm-hmm. is very very disheartening uh, and unfortunate part of this business you know because you have to be a responsible lender you have to make capital available to them at uh, uh, affordable rate be transparent in your dealings and and then you see that you know this entrepreneurs they flourish like anything you know because these are some of the small some of the great businesses small businesses that they are running out, out of their backyards uh, the cattle businesses okay. some of the other businesses that they run and that is the way to build the way to build an economy is ground up uh, you cannot build an economy exactly. from top up it has to be from ground up so you exactly. have to make you have to strengthen this base the bottom that we talk about which is mm-hmm. the majority of the people uh, 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 in this uh, in this category agreed agreed and uh, no i think as you rightly said uh, they are been uh, like blatantly exploited by the informal lending segment right i have seen interest rate as high as 30 35% in uh, interest free loan what do you say collateral free loans and those kind of things and that is just the beginning uh what i would want to understand so i think one of the major problem statements the reason why banks and nbfcs are not really you know tapping or uh, tapping as much into the segment as they should is the lack of data and lack of uh, data points to underwrite them right so True. how are you solving for that problem statement when you talk about uh, you know giving loans to these uh, tier 3 tier 4 small entrepreneurs so you know we are doing two or three things uh, differently you know uh, we always knew that when we when we started targeting this segment that you know data is going to be a challenge mm-hmm. so what do you do to kind of an address that problem uh, i think what we started doing is we have, we kind of you know following the businesses we understood their businesses so when my loan officer gets in touch with a customer uh, doesn't matter whether he has any documents no documents what he wants to understand is how is he, how is he running his business you know for how long is he running his business so now let's say for example a cattle owner and how many cattle does he have you know what is the milk production what kind of cattle breed he has where does he sell his milk 
what we do is you know by collecting 250 300 data points we actually establish or create a full pnl statement for him uh, at the back end uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, through our uh, internal proprietary software we create the whole pnl uh, balance sheet we create his whole income statement cash flow analysis so all that we have to do is we have to start asking the right question and kind of you know do some form of some form of small verifications you know uh, neighbor verification is very important what kind of a house is he living in it has to be an own house uh, some form of business continuity for the last 3 years we will not do migrant population because traceability is an important factor in our business uh, so those if you do the right checks and balances understand these businesses uh, uh, so you can actually create a business model and understand whether the cash flows are actually there to support a borrowing of 1 lakh 2 lakh 3 lakh rupees for this person True. or not um, mm-hmm. so so we actually are very close to the customers businesses on the ground we understand those businesses now today we have created specific templates for kirana for cattle for other trading businesses manufacturing small so when we talk about manufacturing these are all small 10 people 12 people doing some kind of a contract manufacturing for mm-hmm. a larger uh, uh, industry uh those kind of uh, you know businesses that we support but right. but you have to understand be closer to the businesses and understand their cash flows i think that is the key i think i think this approach is really great uh, i've spoken to a couple of other people in this segment and what i what i personally feel that differentiates uh, your approach is the fact that you actually sit down with these guys and you know the kind of the detail that you have gone into when you said I realized it when you said that you have created separate templates for a Kirana store versus a manufacturing unit versus a small few other entrepreneurs, and you yourself are creating the P&L and balance sheet statements for them, the cash flow analytics for them. That is probably what not a, not a lot of vendors are actually looking into. Right, because that's a lot of hard work, you know. Because exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, you need feet on street to go down and yeah. sit with them, yeah. and that takes that takes a lot of uh, cash. I mean, capital as well as. Uh, human labor as well i mean absolutely is- so 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 it helps us two ways in two ways one uh, uh, you know one we are very close to the customer so so lending is always a relationship business you know uh, exactly. while today it's become more commoditized in terms of you know uh, how you offer that services but i think it is still a relationship business uh, there has to be a lot of trust established between the lender and the borrower Uh, and mm-hmm. and it's not just a one time thing right it's not like a soap manufacturing you know that you sell a soap and then you uh, uh, and you don't care whether he likes or not likes you know uh, it doesn't matter once you're lending you have to have that relationship for the next 24 months let's say if you're lent for 2 years or 3 years that 24 mm-hmm. months because that money has to come back every month in the form of an emi uh, so you need to right. understand the psyche that you know whether that business is sustainable for 2 years 3 years or not and beyond for him to repay back uh, and, and how is he using that money so you need to understand and doing that uh, uh, sitting in bombay or delhi is not going to help you know you have to be closer to that customer be with him so my loan officer visits those customers and you know, because we kind of you know have a route planning done for the loan officer in terms of how he kind of you know generates his business uh, so he is in regular contact with the customer any problem that he faces you know we are the first ones to know uh anything that happens in the local community we we actually know what is happening so we take corrective actions in terms of our risk management how do we manage that risk uh mm-hmm. whereas uh, if you look at some of the failures of the of the fintech industry because they have lent aggressively while not knowing how to collect uh, i think mm-hmm. that is a biggest missing uh, piece that everybody kind of you know forgets to do because lending is easy but i think collecting that money back is the hardest part collections is the key yes collections is the key yeah definitely definitely and in uh, and these kind of businesses and the kind of relationship that you uh, that you mentioned that you have with these borrowers i think it has a robust foundation for a uh, build i mean having any kind of a digital relationship initially you, you would want to have a high touch point high engagement relationship with these guys where in your officers are going and meeting these people frequently they are keeping up to date even if there is nothing at least mahine mein ek to bar agar jaate ho banda mil raha hai wo entrepreneur ko that keeps the guy also the the businessman also on his toes ki nahi these people 
आर कमिंग देयर अराउंड योर एंड आप पैसे मांगेंगे तो आके देने पड़ेंगे फिर दोस काइंड ऑफ मेंटालिटी एज वेल एज अ गुड रिलेशनशिप इज समथिंग दैट नीड्स टू बी बिल्ड विद दिस एंटरप्रेन्योर्स फर्स्ट बिफोर एक्चुअली यू नो हैविंग अ फुल्ली डिजिटल uh this thing because of this specific segment what i have observed is does not take digital relationships that seriously or they don't understand the understand ki this is as good as a physical relationship that i have with these lender wo ek distinction nahi ho pata hai ha you are right shes kya hota hai ki no once so the kind of profile of these people are very different what different hota hai agar aap usko bologe ki aap download kar lo app aap documents upload kar lo wo कुछ हो गया नेटवर्क नहीं है समथिंग इज गोइंग नॉट गोइंग राइट इट विल जस्ट फॉलो सो यू हैव टू बी क्लोजर टू दैट यस व्हाट वी डू इज आपको ये देखना है कि हाउ कैन यू यूज टेक्नोलॉजी टू लिवरेज दिस यू नो हाउ डू यू मेक श्योर दैट द जर्नी इज स्मूथ फॉर द कस्टमर हाउ डू यू रीच मोर कस्टमर थ्रू डिजिटल मीन्स यू नो हाउ डू यू मेक श्योर दैट द कलेक्शन हैपन डिजिटली यू नो इफ यू इफ आई गिव एन एग्जाम्पल बिफोर कोविड almost 50% of the collection was happening in cash before covid today mm. only 20% less than 20% happens in cash uh, got it because and it takes time to educate people you know uh, we do a lot of education series with these people saying that regular workshops karte hain you know they i'll talk about some of the other impact initiatives that we are doing uh, but mm. to be on this point you know there is a lot of learning that we have to impart in terms of you know why is it important for you to you know digitally transact because it creates a credit history for you you know tomorrow you might need a 5 lakh 10 lakh 20 lakh loan but how are you going to get that loan if you don't have a credit history you know exactly it is in your interest to kind of you know start dealing so you know a lot of people have resistance because they say that you know our customers they pay us in cash you know when we buy things they ask us for cash so it becomes kind of you know vicious cycle of cash transactions but mm-hmm. we say that you know try and convert a small part of that into a digital means try and deposit some of that cash into bank and then uh, issue some checks or do a upi transaction or do some kind of a digital transaction to establish some kind of a credit history and you know, initially there is a lot of resistance but i think after covid also there is a lot of uh, acceptance in terms of digital yes digital and as the you know 4g penetration has significantly improved i think mm-hmm. in the next year two year when the 5g starts coming into into play i think that is really going to kind of you know uh, 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 really take off in terms of the digital adoption uh, uh, of some of these channels i believe you know uh, so these are exciting times here very exciting times to be there no, definitely definitely i completely agree with you and covid has actually pushed digital transactions a lot and uh, the penetration has been uh, multifold when you talk about tier 3 tier 4 that those areas a lot of people have started using upi because iske pehle kya hota tha ki wahan pe codes lage hue rehte hain but people were not still matlab 10 to 20% transactions bhi or upi se nahi hote the whereas now you would get to 50 to 60% of uh, kirana stores daily transaction coming in through upi because wo ek bar convenience ki aadat lag jati hai then you don't want to put your hand into your pocket count cash and give absolutely so i'll give you an anecdote so to, uh, you know last week i was in rishikesh and you know we were near lakshman jhula and you know we took a taxi mm-hmm. and you know the taxi fare was 150 fixed fare mm-hmm. so i had a 200 rupees note I, i told him this is so that's the best i could have given him 200 rupees note right so he said sir you are 200 rupees there of 150 rupees aap upi kar dijiye uh mere paas change nahi hai so that's it's very heartening so so yeah. you know, one is that you know uh, typically once you see a cash people would want to take cash because that emotional thing is there still with that physical cash but mm. i think that that mindset is changing when that guy said that you know i don't want 200 rupees because i don't have a change i will have to look around for a change this is my upi this thing uh, uh, qr code please scan and please pay me 150 bucks exactly uh, and it's happening across length and breadth of the country you know wherever i visit wherever i go i think uh, you really don't need to carry cash today to be honest bilkul bilkul i completely agree with you uh there is a small anecdote that i'd like to share back this is back just after uh, uh, just before covid i had gone to shimla in shimla mein uh, if you remember there is a church upar wahan pe right jo church hai wahan se uh-huh. there is a uh, there is a road that comes down and there is a quaint coffee shop on the on the, on the side of the road uh, i saw a beggar sitting down there and uh, wo 
मांग रहा था कि यार कुछ दे दो एंड आई वाज लाइक कि आई डिड नॉट आई वाज आई मीन आई नॉर्मली रोम अराउंड कैश लेस आई ओनली हैव माय क्यूआर कोड बट लाइक यार मेरे पास कैश वैश नहीं है कोई बात नहीं सर आप यूपीआई कर लो ये लो मेरा क्यूआर कोड एंड दैट गाइस कि आप इस पे कर दो जितना कर लो एंड जस्ट बिकॉज़ ही हैड दैट क्यूआर कोड अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल वर डूइंग इट फॉर द नोवेल्टी फैक्टर कि यार बंदा अभी इससे मतलब बी मांग रहा है तो भी अभी क्यूआर कोड से मांग रहा है सो दैट काइंड ऑफ actually increased his i mean i spoke to him and that kind of increased his earnings to agar wo khali baitha rehta wahan pe aur wo katora leke baitha rehta to din ke 100 rupaye kama leta max 100 200 rupaye agar usko mil jate yahan pe he is earning probably 500 to 1000 bucks in a day because yeah. he has that qr code people are doing it just because of the novelty factor true interesting interesting anecdote 2018 <laughs> 2018 ke end mein uh speaking of anecdotes uh Every you know every startup has a story of its first customer or first successful you know gratifying experience with the customer. So, आपके Finbox के साथ ऐसा क्या experience है कि आपने ऐसा पहला या कोई एक memorable initial loan दिया था जो कि you know that you still remember that customer जहाँ पे कि आपने वो personal experience करा था या ऐसा कुछ. No, I still remember my first customer. Uh, everybody remembers. I think it was Feb tenth, two thousand nineteen, when hmm. uh, uh, this person came. and uh, down to uh, bharatpur was our first branch and you know uh-huh. after the opening uh, of that branch i said i'll i'll, I'll sit here for uh, 10 days 15 days so i was there there was mm-hmm. one loan officer uh, with me and one credit officer with me so we were three people so the first loan that we sanctioned was for this 1 lakh 51000 rupees 51000 okay. and i still remember uh, 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 the husband uh, was illiterate Uh, so because of the fact that you know on the loan we have both the husband and the wife uh, on mm-hmm. the loan uh, so uh, so the first uh, when the husband said that you know mujhe angutha lagana hoga because i don't know how to sign the documents uh, mm-hmm. so at that point i we had this physical because we had just started we had this physical application form so he right. kind of you know agreement so he uh, angutha usne lagaya when the wife came Uh, then I, you know, the natural instinct is that you know I assumed, which is wrong uh, on my part, that you know even she'll be illiterate, and you know I kind of you know forwarded that uh, 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 ink box saying that "ab bhi laga dijiye." She said, "I can sign." Uh, I still remember. She said, "I can sign. I need a pen." I was yeah, I was okay. taken aback, and you know sometimes you kind of you know <laughs> uh, 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 you know you are in your own. we conceived uh, you know uh, this thing so i was okay. yes yeah. so notion and then i was pleasantly surprised and i was so happy that you know at least she she was literate she signed and she signed and she was very happy and she took the check and i'll tell you that that customer is still our customer in the third cycle so we wow. gave him one and a half lakh rupees in the side second cycle we gave him 2.5 lakhs and now he is come back again we have given him a uh, 4 lakh rupee loan uh so wow. so that is a very very gratifying and in that is the relationship now i think we build with this customer and even though after a loan lot of people have gone and said that you know we are ready to because now that credit history has got established we'll give you loan we'll give you loan he said no we'll take loan only from money box uh, uh and, exactly and, and there are so many mm-hmm. stories like this you know sure i can tell you uh, you know which is which is more humbling because the fact that the work that we do which comes back to us in form of these stories you know there is a widow uh, uh, which nobody and and uh, she just lost her husband and nobody uh, and she they had a small kirana shop that that was being run by the husband uh, but now uh, uh, they she was in need of money and to run this shop for her children and everybody uh, to take this forward and then that's when our loan officer reached out to her understood we understood that there is a need and mm-hmm. we understood that you know there is a business which we can fund So we gave her a one lakh rupee loan as a test to see whether she'll be able to run this business and then pay back. I'm I am so happy to tell you that today uh, she's not only expanded that business, she has opened a small, fa- you know, what what was the fancy store shop besides the Kerala wow. store shop uh, with the same wow. amount of money. And today uh, children are going to school very happy, and she is kind of in running that business successfully on her own. There is nobody to support. She did it all on her own. Uh, really and 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 the reason we and we funded that we so happy that we took that call on that lady saying that okay we'll we'll do it as a test case whether she'll be able to do it and mm-hmm. she repaid that trust fully you know and and there's so many stories like this uh, you know in every branch in every state that we go uh, and it's a very really humbling experience to kind of you know see that that impact is happening on the ground uh, real impact to be honest i'm sure i'm sure as an entrepreneur i think this must be something which is extremely gratifying 
कि वो जॉब छोड़ के ये चीज चालू करी उसका जो सेटिस्फेक्शन जो मिल रहा होगा ये सब स्टोरी सुन के दैट कुड बी इवेंट्स या दिस इज अ रिलेशनशिप दैट ओनली समवन हु हैज दैट लास्ट माइल टच पॉइंट्स एंड लास्ट माइल अगर आपकी पर्सनली या आपके जो ऑफ लोन ऑफिस अगर वो पर्सनली जाके विजिट कर रहे हैं दैट इज व्हेन दीस काइंड ऑफ रिलेशनशिप्स कैन बी बिल्ड अदरवाइज अगर पूरा डिजिटल डिजिटल अगर रखोगे दिस एसेंशियली वोंट कम थ्रू राइट दिस वोंट कम थ्रू द फिल्टर्स या सो so it has to be a personal experience it has to be a relationship based approach you know exactly you have to understand the you have to have a lot of empathy you need to understand what a person really needs how you can really find it so obviously we are not an ngo so we actually do a lot of uh, mm. you know analysis underwriting to say that you know whether this is a fundable business or not but of course being profitable doesn't mean that you don't have empathy you can't do the right thing you know because because uh, सस्टेनेबल भी है इम्पैक्ट भी है एंड दिस थिंग दैट यू नो इट रियली बिल्ड्स एन इकोसिस्टम ऑफ दिस स्मॉल आर्टिक्यूनर्स इन दिस टीयर थ्री एंड टीयर फोर टाउन्स डेफिनेटली एंड यहां पे वन क्वेश्चन दैट केम टू माय माइंड व्हेन यू आर स्पीकिंग राइट जो ये आपने एनेक्डोट्स बताया बोथ वर अबाउट वुमेन एंटरप्रेन्योर्स सो व्हाट व्हाट परसेंटेज ऑफ योर पोर्टफोलियो वुड यू थिंक यू नो गोस टू दैट डायरेक्शन ऑफ वुमेन एंटरप्रेन्योर्स के साइड पे so so more than 35% of our borrowers are women entrepreneurs uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, if you look at the whole structure i would say in on a loan if there is a women uh, applicant or a borrower or not that will be 90% plus but the first applicant you know where we are mm-hmm. saying that you are the first obligor that will be more than 35% wow. of, of our borrowers so today Understood. you would have funded more than 35000 uh, you know businesses in the last 4 4 years or so and of mm-hmm. 35% of that will be women borrowers and so, more than 30% of first time borrowers also new to credit mm-hmm. uh these are people who have not been tested by anybody uh they are coming to the market for borrowing uh from a formal the source for the first time, time. Mm-hmm. and this is roughly more than 30% of our borrowers today understood and do you see a distinct credit behavior difference when you talk about uh loans given to first borrower where uh, where a woman is a borrower versus where a man is a first borrower do you see a difference in the default ratio or credit behavior or all of that no that is there that is there for sure and that that's like uh, a proven thing that you know a woman borrower is more responsible uh, uh, in terms of you know what she borrows and how she repays so mm-hmm. if you look at our default rates i would say definitely whilst there is not a significant divergence because our overall default rates are very low uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's roughly around 0.7% cross cross npas gross non performing assets but even mm-hmm. within that if you want to dissect it i would say that women borrowers <laughs> are a tad better than what the male borrowers are and that is a proven hypothesis that you know uh, they are more responsible uh, borrowers they Bilkul. they handle money much better uh, and they have this thing that to repay this urge to repay back you know whilst men sometimes tend to be casual about money <laughs> true true uh, i think ye gramin ne ye gramin ne kisi ne shuruaat kari thi wherein they started right. fund women entrepreneurs in a certain area versus the men entrepreneurs and they saw a drastic difference in i think bangladesh which was issue pilot hua tha iska that's right and so this is this is now uh, uh, for the last 10 15 years this is now a tested this thing and the whole microfinance industry is based on this that you know uh, mm. the women borrowers are the borrowers who kind of you know get funded first and now obviously you have uh, uh, both male and female but initially when it started it was the women borrowers uh, where the group was getting constructed बिल्कुल बिल्कुल आई थिंक आई कंप्लीटली अग्री विद यू ऑन दैट एंड ये जो ग्रामीण ने हाइपोथेसिस बिल्ड कर दिया दैट इज एक्चुअली हेल्पिंग अ लॉट मोर एंटरप्रेन्योर्स टू गेट फंडेड एट द ग्राउंड लेवल इज व्हाट आई फील बट हैविंग सेड दैट आई थिंक वी आर आल्सो रनिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ अ टाइम सो आई थिंक आई हैव टू स्टार्ट रैपिंग द कन्वर्सेशन अप एक चीज जो अभी पेंडिंग है इज अ रैपिड फायर राउंड दैट आई हैव रिसेंटली स्टार्टेड इन डूइंग सो चार एक क्वेश्चन रहेंगे एंड यू हैव टू आंसर इट विद इन लाइक 10 सेकंड्स फ्लैट श्योर not too much thinking about it uh okay here goes the first one which is the entrepreneur that you look up to the most if you uh, i look up to steve jobs i think you know uh, uh, obviously so i i i can i expand on that or, or yeah, that's right that. i think we can we, yeah. we'll come to that i'll i'll ask you that no. question because okay. steve jobs is also my uh, my idol as well so i kind of uh, idolize him a bit 
Right. A bit too much, I would say. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, one fintech startup that you feel has a huge, it has made a huge impact in the Indian industry, in the Indian fintech industry. Um, I think in the, in the payment side, I think Razor Pay has made a huge impact. I think everywhere now, if you go, I think you will find a Razor Pay. Uh, on the payment side, at least you know, at least that is something that I feel has made a huge impact. Uh, but you know, there are too many to kind of you know name uh, in the fintech. There's so much of innovation happening everywhere. To be honest, definitely. Okay. Uh, third question: Which is your favorite book? Uh, uh, so I don't remember the name of the book, but this was a book which I read about uh, when the Russia was getting disintegrated, and you know how. How the businesses were getting so this is big, big book by Bill Browder, if I remember the name correctly. Uh, but very fascinating story how some of the great businesses were getting built after the disintegration of Russia, uh, the USSR. Uh, very very. Uh, Got nice it. Book. Bill Browder yeah. is it? Yeah. Okay, definitely will uh, try and check it out. I'll take a note. Sure. Awesome. And uh, last question: What time do you wake up every day? I wake up at 5:30. Uh, uh, I want to start waking up even earlier, uh, but 5:30 is what uh, I I wake up. The कुछ कुछ फायदा वायदा होता है because मेरे जैसे लोगों का ऐसा इतने try करिए बहुत बार 15 दिन टिकता है वो phase जहाँ पे साढ़े पांच को उठते हैं उसके बाद ही तक है ना I'm back to like my normal time 8:30 9 o'clock. So I'm not a night animal to be honest. Even when I was in my college school, you know, I could never study. At night, you know, so I could. I used to finish my nine ten. Mm-hmm. I can wake up at three thirty four and then study for two three hours because that's when I feel the mind is the fresh, uh, most fresh, and then the absorption rate. But I think it works the reverse for everybody else. I think you know because whoever I speak to, I think everybody loves uh, you know studying at night. But I could never do that. So I I'm a morning person in that sense. Same. Mera aisa. Mera actually pura ulta hai. Jaisa apne kaha. I am someone who can study the entire night, but अगर आप मुझे कहो कि सुबह पांच बजे उठ के पढ़ो तो यार वो हमसे ना हो पाए। That's it. I think that's our time. Uh, thank you so much. It was a real pleasure having you, Mr. Mayur. And काफी मजा आया आपसे बात करके। You were really candid. We had a lot of fun, and I think this was it was an overall a very insightful conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shares. Thank you, Shares. Thank you. Lovely talking to you.